Okay, good morning. So one of your uh, classmates gave an idea that we have the uh, we give a flow chart, a flow chart of all the steps. I know this doesn't look much like the flow chart which we are really used to, but uh, I hope that uh, this will suffice. Okay, I hope that it will suffice. Uh, today we are going to go through the steps for designing of lacing. Okay, so lacing is a arrangement by which you make a compound column act like one. You make a compound column act like one. You try your best to ensure that the position of the two elements are not changed. Okay, so the position. Whenever you are applying a load, an axial load especially, it tends to move the uh, move the uh, uh, fibers okay away from the neutral axis or centroidal axis. In the case of an element, the elements uh, take a bent shape, which is displaced away from the centroidal axis. So as long as the two, uh, as long as the center lines of both the columns which are making or any number of columns or units which make up the compound uh, section have the same uh, distance between the uh, centroidal axis of the individual elements and the compound section you will not face any difficulty ok I will suggest that you guys take a few notes here <coughs> right now coming to our uh, compression this is again you know like a continuation of the compression members which we have been doing and uh, yes so here if you see you will find that uh, clause 7.6 typically deals with the uh, with the design of lacings okay so just have a you can just open your clause 7.6 laced members vary very slightly in the design okay because in addition to designing the main elements okay now you have actually finished designing the main elements the principal elements which make up the uh, uh, column you have designed okay or you are familiar with that design that's what we have been doing till now now we are going to see what the elements which are going to join the two individual units okay if you look at this uh, arrangement this is the same as what we had in our exam also okay what we had in the uh, exam was also two uh, columns connected toe to toe okay so we have already solved uh, some of the properties or all the properties of the section here now we are only going to design the lacing which is going to be uh, made to ensure that this these two units act as one okay this is the uh, only work which we are going to I mean this is the only thing which we are going to do in uh, this class now we are I am going to the design of compression members ok so flow chart for lacing design first compute the properties of section this is something which we have already done earlier I mean like I am going to use the same problem like what we had in the exam here also then we need to decide the lacing pattern ok so these are some of the lacing pattern which is uh, permitted so uh, if you look at this what you are trying to tell is when I am looking at the section from this direction say when I am looking at the section from uh, this direction this is the y by this, this is the lacing which I see again when I see from uh, this direction so this is what I get to see now what you are saying is if I am going to look through a laced element I should be able to see I mean like it should be that the other face also is a shadow of the one on this side it means you cannot keep the lacing pattern on the other side I am making the opposite side as dashed it's recommended that you don't do this but if you really want you can always go for a X pattern of bracing you can always go for an X pattern of bracing that is a uh, lacing sorry that is perfectly acceptable that is perfectly acceptable now 
the slenderness ratio of the built up column uh, when it is having a lacing laced system uh, should have its slenderness ratio increased by 5 percentage ok so this is to take into account shear deformation which takes place ok now if you look at it basically the uh, uh, the deformation which you get would be because of the shearing force which is going to be set up at various uh, points along the uh, length of the element so the clause 7.6.5.1 asks you to increase it by 1.05 it means if I am going to have a if I am going to have a, a slenderness ratio yeah as uh, I mean like if I am getting 2.8 effectively I will be using a KL by R I should have uh, got that is over here 114.1 I will be using, I uh, will be increasing it by 5 percentage. Okay, so when I am increasing that by 5 percentage, 114.1 into 1.05, I will be using 119 instead of 114. It's a very minor uh, change, but still it does have a impact. Okay. So this is about the slenderness ratio. Then you go for the width of the lacing bar. You are having the lacing bar. You are going to see how wide we should decide the lacing bar uh, to be so no no not, yeah you also it's better that you sit up yeah you are smiling about something would you like to share sure okay fine now when you're looking at the lacing bar we need to have enough space around the bar when you are bolting it effectively essentially so that is why it is asking for 3 times the nominal diameter of the bolt so if I am using M20 the flat should be 60 mm wide if it is a flat you are going to look at uh, the width being 60 mm if it is an angle again you will be ensuring that you are having sufficient width ok so in fact for this case what I will say is this side you should have D and then uh, the space beyond the bolt hole it should be according to the connection rules for angle because connections each type of element has different rules for making the connection ok now uh, you have found out the width of the flat ok you are now uh, going to find the minimum thickness ok minimum thickness of the flat now what is a flat what is a flat probably you should define that any element uh, any strip of metal which is being used is essentially a flat ok for example if you remember the uh, this one this is that railway uh, traction pole this is a flat ok this flat is getting connected to the channel ok one more thing like in yesterday's class if you remember in the previous class if you remember we were talking about how the uh, sections should be arranged so that you know the it, they meet in the center line so if this is the center line of the column you will find that the center line of this flat and center line of this flat meet the center line of the channel section ok so this is one more thing like you know you can try to relate uh, to what we saw in the previous class here it is a welded uh, connection so the welded flats have a slightly yeah please see instead of sleeping here you should have been in the hospital bed comfortably sleeping ok honestly because uh, if I see you guys sleep it, it puts me off ok so <laughs> and also I do not understand how people can pay for a lecture and then go to sleep ok now coming here 
So coming back here, we have now we now know how wide the flat is going to be. We are going to now see how thick the flat has to be. Okay. Now if I am going to have a longer section, okay, how can I make it resist buckling better? I am having a long section. I, uh, how can I just make it resist buckling better? What would be the parameter which helps you resist buckling? Thickness. If you are looking at it as a section property, it will translate to probably the slenderness ratio. So, slenderness ratio. If the slenderness ratio is very very uh, large, it is a very slender member. It will start to buckle very easily. Okay, it will start to buckle very easily. Okay, so to reduce the slenderness, the denominator value has to be increased. Okay, and the only way you can do is by increasing the thickness. You can increase the width, but the thickness will have a more significant role. Okay, now I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The width, width will also have a width is the i i i is depending on the width, not the thickness. But if suppose you are going to be having a restriction on the width, thickness has to be increased. I'm sorry. I hope you got my point, guys. If I want to increase the value of i, if I want to increase the value of i of this section, okay, I've got two sections here. If depth is going to be constant, thickness only can be increased. On the other hand, if I'm having the freedom to increase the depth, this section. Will have a much higher value of I value, okay? But then uh, slenderness ratio, okay? I'll I, uh, I'll leave it for now. Here, what happens is the L effective or the effective length is taken between the two rivets. I mean, two bolts. Okay, two bolts are there. So whatever is the length between that, it is going to be taken as L effective and Here we are saying that the thickness of the flat should be uh, L effective by 40. So it means this is going to be the minimum thickness which you are going to keep so that the uh, the flat is going to be safe. So that the flat is going to be safe against failure due to buckling. Got it? So this is the other parameter which we have. Now the other thing is. We are going to fix the spacing of the element. Okay, we are going to fix the spacing of the element. Now, okay, if you look at this, this value is called as a one. This value is called as a one, and r one would be the um, radius of duration of the. Whole section. It will be the radius of duration of the whole section. When I say whole section, it means the main column section. R is the radius of duration of the main column section. So when you are having a one by r one, okay, it should be lesser than or equal to fifty. So you are just going to take the value of a one. You are going to divide it by r one, and then you you will see whether it is lesser than or equal to. 50 in other words a1 can be is limited to r1 by 50 then again they are having one more condition you have to check whether it is uh, equal to this 70% of kl by r okay which is the slenderness ratio so the last uh, i mean like the other thing is you are going to check whether it is less than 140 so these are the checks which you do To ensure that the lacing element is laterally stable. When you say, what do we mean by laterally stable? The lacing flat is kept here. Now, when this is going to undergo compression, when this lacing flat is going to undergo compression, it is going to buckle. It is going to buckle. We don't want it to buckle. So, when these uh, dimensions are used, we are not going to have the lacing flat buckle. It, and when it is not buckling, it means that the two channel section or whatever sections which we have are not going to buckle. Okay, so uh, this is a, a brief overview of 
how you size the lacing flat okay how you dimension the lacing flat so the dimensions which we do width of the lacing flat thickness of the lacing flat so these two are the only things which you decide after you decide that you go for the design for for strength so you are going to check the length you remember all the columns we are uh, all the columns are based on the kl by r ratio all your column designs are based on kl by r ratio in the same way you are going to design this also and then you are going to see uh, and you are going to just design it for a force of 2.5 p by n okay so n is nothing but a number of lacing members in a particular plane suppose i am going to uh, cut a cross section here so how many lacing members uh, would be getting cut here how many lacing members will get cut here i am cutting the plane how many lacing members are going to get cut 1 2 3 or 4 2 so because one is on this side or one is on face a one is on face b and again if i am going to cut here it is going to be four members got it if you look if you look at the uh, if you look at the code if this member is going to be subject to bending also that means this member is uh, taking a bent shape like this the member is taking a bent shape like this because of the bending moment because of the bending moment you also have shear at each section okay you also have shear at each section so the lacing bar should be designed to take the whatever is the force that is 2.5 into t you are having this 2.5 by t divided by n this force plus actual shear actual shear which is coming due to bending okay so when you are having a member subject to bending it also has a shear force so that shear force should also be resisted by the lacing bar okay are these steps clear right so i think we will understand it better when we go through a problem